how many different civilizations, and thus different builders, have actually been and gone, only to be ignored by an academia wishing for their remnants to simply erode away. These remnants, many of which still existing ancient ruins, are visited by billions of people every year each attributed to a convenient imposter, a lie which conveniently ties in with previously printed, condoned, and currently preserved paradigms by superior influences, not only ill-informing the world's young population, but attempting to rob us all of our own personal histories. However, thankfully, some things do not lie, cannot be hidden, and will never go away. We share many ancient, out-of-place artifacts on our channel, some more perplexing than others, yet our next artifacts might be the most puzzling yet. Found in Kosovo, upon the Shar Planina mountain range, an ancient advanced artifact that has been explained as having once been some kind of transformer. Found by photographer and researcher Ismet Smiley, he subsequently donated a sample for scientific examination. It was found that the artifact is no less than 20,000 years old. In addition to the stone, coil, and copper wires, the artifact amazingly contains some form of ancient insulator, whose composition differs from the surrounding material. Although not tested, it appears to have mysterious convex bands fused into a stone. Parallel to these are four symmetrically located openings, which have been postulated to have been entry points for wires, these once collecting energy from the transformer. What is this mystifying object? What was it once used for? Who made it? And with dating results of over 20,000 years, just how much older could it possibly be? Could these objects have once been a common occurrence amongst this ancient civilization? Similar to the clearly advanced metal clamps previously covered and found upon numerous ancient block-built buildings throughout antiquity. Due to the sheer number of clamps used, although they are clearly a remnant left by a lost civilization, far older than academia would ever attribute the buildings to. Many of the clamps have survived the eons to be tested, examined, and displayed in numerous different museums as more modern artifacts. Is this how this transformer survived? Was it due to the sheer number of them once in existence? Or is it possibly a very special rarity? Unfortunately, regardless of alternative advice, Ismet intends to donate it to academically funded scientists for, quote, further studies. We feel there is a high probability that the artifact may be lost or stolen. Regardless, it was thankfully photographed and is undoubtedly a very remarkable object. We often encounter a variety of techniques used by individuals and academic bodies who are attempting to stem the flow of true historical knowledge. Indeed, many of the most controversial and compelling artifacts are often stolen, conveniently lost, or simply sold on by their original discoverer, never to be seen again. However, sometimes, these artifacts successfully make it into the public domain photographed and studied by reliable figures before these vanishing acts can occur. And our next artifact is no exception. Predictably, the tactic that is seemingly chosen for these particular smoking guns is for the academic and scientific worlds to simply ignore such objects as if they do not exist. Or, as with this particular upart, to dismiss it to look away and claim it is simply impossible. Known as the Nampa doll, it is a small figurine confirmed beyond doubt as having once been crafted by the hands of man. It was discovered in 1889 by a group of workers who were searching for water near the town of Nampa in southwestern Idaho. They were attempting to create a well, drilling a borehole down to a depth of 295 feet at which point they began to bring up strange cuts of clay. Amongst them was a unique projectile, a tiny clay figure in the shape of a woman. 
Professor Albert A. Wright of Oberlin College officiated the figure's authenticity in 1979, making academia's attempts to vanish the out-of-place figure near impossible. Quote, it was not the product of a small child or amateur, but was made by a true artist. Though badly battered by time, the doll's appearance is still distinct. It has a bulbous head with barely discernible mouth and eyes, broad shoulders, short thick arms, and long legs. There are also faint geometric markings on the figure, which represent either clothing patterns or jewelry. They are found mostly on the chest or around the neck, arms, and wrists. The doll is the image of a person of a high civilization, artistically attired. We find his conclusion of it being of a person of high civilization as the most compelling, further supporting our belief that the doll is a leftover remnant of a now lost civilization. And due to academia's dismissive attitude towards the stonework, it is lost as a result of their conspiratorial ignorance. Furthermore, and an additionally intriguing reality, is the dating of the artifact. The geological strata it was discovered amongst is known as the Glens Ferry Formation, that, according to the same entities that deny the artifact's existence, was created approximately 2 million years ago during the Pliocene-Pleistocene transition. Additionally, before the mass cover-up of artifacts, research, and indeed evidence from the public domain, George Frederick Wright, a geologist from the Boston Society of Natural History, also confirmed this astonishing object's authenticity. Quote, There is no ground to question the fact that this image came up in the sand pump from the depth reported. In visiting the locality in 1890, I took special pains while on the ground to compare the discoloration of the oxide upon the image with that upon the clay balls still found among the debris, and ascertained it to be as nearly identical as it is possible to be. These confirmation evidences, in connection with the very satisfactory character of the evidence, furnished by the parties who made the discovery, confirmed by Mr. G. M. Gumming of Boston, who was the superintendent of that division, and who knew all the parties, placed the genuineness of the discovery, in my mind, beyond reasonable doubt." End quote. How could a figurine, dated at 2 million years old, identified as having come from a technologically advanced civilization, exist? Authenticated by a number of official and highly trained individuals, if indeed there has never been another technologically advanced civilization to have flourished here upon our planet. We find the fact that academia is simply attempting to dismiss its existence, proof of their concealment of this truth, making the Nampa figurine undoubtedly highly compelling. Ancient Uparts A section of ancient history which many find as their preference it is undeniably one of the strongest areas of argument within the study of antiquities which is in support of the past existence of once highly capable, incredibly technologically advanced, yet now lost ancient civilizations. The ancient astronaut theory being one main topic of interest within the Uparts realm. When it comes to certain current or now past allies, in alliance with our so often reiterated posit, of the existence and the volumes of surviving evidence in support of a now lost, often also claimed, now actively hidden, enormous number of chapters of human history. It is thanks to their laborious collaborative efforts which has allowed us to accomplish such a strong and compelling evidence. In addition, the realization that much of these sites and anomalous features also display a strong evidential suggestion that many of these civilizations somehow succumbed suddenly, possibly to a past cataclysm. However, if this vast and still growing file of evidence, all suggesting sudden demise, is, in the future, somehow found to have been an undeniable reality, possibly a repeated event, a question arises. Who could these claimed ancient astronauts possibly have been? The evidence suggesting sudden halts in undertaking within countless elaborately created by clearly highly resourced people 
megalithic quarries, which were inexplicably abandoned, litter our planet. This may suggest that these uparts are either of returning unfortunate witnesses to this cataclysm, somehow returning many generations later, successfully making contact with a civilization raised from the ashes of their now-forgotten world. Somehow surviving all this time in an ancient spacecraft, possibly better, possibly similar to our own modern space stations, absent long enough to be depicted by a people presumably astonished by their existence. Secondly, they could quite possibly depict ancient, alien visitors to our planet, either once deliberately making contact or once crashing here, forcing these entities to make contact, thus witnessed. Yet, if true, their likeness to Earthlings is a controversial consequence to said history. Or are all somehow a mere coincidence? One or two hoaxes, we feel, is a real reality. But for all these magnificent, enigmatic, and often clear depictions of similarly-looking individuals, all being hoaxes? Yet so far separated geographically, we find unlikely. One must keep this in mind when studying such artifacts, such as the Istanbul rocket. The claimed ancient space module, which became one of the most popular artifacts of the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Sought after by Western scientists and media alike, poured over and written about in hundreds of articles across Europe. Even featuring on television programs and within many newspaper articles. However, what is fascinating about this reality, that for many years, many specialists, often talented people, also just as often funded to presumably determine an inaccuracy in the object's claimed age, did not. Not until a few years ago, that is. In the last few years, it has been that the Istanbul rocket was apparently found to have been a hoax. A plaster cast made some 25 years ago. A puzzling claim when one remembers that just five years after, the space module was sought after by German and English among many other national archaeologists, and was, for a long time, secured in the preservation unit of the museum. Was this really a plaster cast, a mere five years old when this discovery was announced, successfully fooling the world's scientific communities? Or was it like so many other artifacts we study, successfully stolen, then replaced with a clear fake? We will leave that up to you to decide from the evidence available. But. An argument for found crash craft can also be seen in the inspiration for the creation of things, like that of the lid of Pakal's tomb. An enigmatic depiction of this same form of technology, again, turns up all over South America, and even further afield. The Kiev spaceman, yet another found far away in the remote, desolate landscapes of Ukraine. Clearly, a depiction of a gas-breathing humanoid-shaped being depicted with seemingly no injuries, yet the reason for said depiction is an ongoing debate, yet due to its clear characteristics, a welcome member of this long list of ancient uparts. Ancient astronauts? Or merely an extremely elaborate, highly complex, hard-worked, long-lived hoax? We find the evidence to support the theory highly compelling.